but purity. But if I use the word purity, then it becomes something. So we don't use the word. Purity is just a facility to give you an idea that you should reach the core of your being. When you meet your master after a long time, many people say, I feel as though we've come home. So home is hitting the rock bottom or the innermost core of your soul which responds to the Guru that you see that you feel at peace, you feel at home, you feel that this is the place that I've been looking for and this is my home. When you feel that you're in the haven of bliss, you're in soul rest, you're at peace with yourself, you're carefree about the world because you see everything in the world which goes on doesn't really matter. These are idiosyncrasies and small bubbles created by your ego. Everything is an ego game and an ego issue. Otherwise, you are at peace with yourself this very moment. The whole struggle. And you have to do it, mind you. You have to play the game because you've been put in the football field. If you're put centre forward, centre half, left out, left in, you've got to do your game. You got to play your game. Otherwise, you're not. You won't. If you don't play your game properly, you won't finish your karma. So, putting all at rest, that you are pure, imm immaculate, and you can never die. Having this in mind, do your kriya with great ease and relaxation. You are already perfect from within. Don't react to what others do. Don't create a commotion within yourself for no reason at all. So here we are to take stock of ourselves, to see what what is life really life about and what's it that is bugging me? What is it that is... Of course there are issues which are very important to the mind, to the working mind, to the ego that your neighbor is trying to encroach on your land and you feel that later on that he may be a source of trouble. So you take the effort to keep him out of your property. These are justifiable things. You have to play your game. But let what all I'm saying is let not your game of life disturb your innermost core. That's what it shouldn't do. And many of you have become strong by your experience and practices, both the boys and the girls and ladies and everybody, the gents sitting here. After training... Uh, for a constant and steady mind is given to you by your girlfriends and your wives. They train you up a lot how to be steady and constant and not react. So they are a God's gift. The wives are a gift of God. <coughs> Treat them with a lot of respect and love because they nag the husband so much and any husband who comes out of the nagging of the wife is a victorious soul. He's already... <laughs> he's already <laughs> He is already, I won't say he's liberated, it's too much. The wife cannot give you moksha, but she can send you there. She can send you a long way with one, one kick and half the football field is covered. You're half there. Yeah. And uh, yeah. And then the husband stinging and holding his purse and not giving her to spend. That makes her furious. And they say that gives her, teaches her self-control. So these are simple things where the husband and wife and the boyfriend and girlfriend, they evolve one another, right? Evolve. Always, always have dialogue. You don't have to fight directly. You can talk, talk on the table. You can have a dialogue with your wife. I know it's not practical, but tr give it a try. 